ventilators for the anklets. One of the dreadful topics for the anklets. Let's make it easy for ourselves. So stick around and see what I have for you. It's in the form of question and content. We will review both to make this topic easy so that when you wake up in the morning, it asks you about anything about ventilators, it will be easy for you to analyze it. So I'm going to give you five questions initially and later we do more questions. I'm not going to give you the answers, but just to focus you, see how they can take you to with this kind of question. It's a select or apply. And next is teaching new graduate about ventilators. Which mode is paired with the correct description that should be included in the teaching? Pressure support, that's the, the uh, I've given you this. CPAP, I'm giving you this as this control, thus and synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. Look at it, think about it, snapshot it. Take a picture as I go through the lecture, try to answer it yourself, then we'll come back to it. So that's the first question. I'm not giving you the answer. Second question, select or apply to. And next is caring for a client with a severe ARDS on mechanical ventilation. An order for a positive and respiratory pressure of 18 was ordered. The next will anticipate which of the following complications. Well, you know the buzzwords? Look for them. Hypotension, increase in intrathoracic pressure, JVD, pneumothorax, barotrauma, and lower urine output. What do you think? Select or apply. Choose that, the, those that you're really confident about and answer the question. This is what we're talking about. Number two. Number three, another select apply. And this is caring for a client receiving mechanical ventilation. High pressure alarm was registered. The nurse will anticipate which of the following. High pressure alarm. What is the cause? Mucus block, self extubation, kink in the tube, calf leak, pneumothorax, and the trachea tube disconnection. What is your answer? Take a picture and take a look at it as we go through the lecture. Number four, and this is caring for a client receiving mechanical ventilation. The client was extubated two hours ago. Which of the following assessment require immediate intervention? Like this is saturation 94% on two liters, decreased breath sound on both long basis and audible strider. Think about it and be sharp when you think about it. Number five. Which of the following actions performed by LPN need immediate intervention regarding endotracheal tube inline suctioning? When you're doing inline suctioning, what do you do? Apply suction for 15 seconds during withdrawal, pre oxygenate the patient before suctioning, suction client every hour, apply suction during insertion, draw AVG immediately after suctioning. What do you think? This is what I want you to think about as we go through the lecture. So let's get to it. Briefly, I'm going to make this brief, but straight to the point. Okay, ventilators are very important. We need it because we have respiratory failure and we have to provide respiratory what, support. This is the main reason why we give in to the patient. Okay, um, initially, we give them full support because they have respiratory failure, right? Since they have respiratory failure, we have to provide full support. Then when they're getting better, we wean them off, wean off the ventilator and we put them on something that patient can start breathing on their home. So they can take breaths. They start taking breath. That's what we want, spontaneous breath. And when they get to that point, that's the winning mode after that, then we extubate them. And when we extubate them, you got to take care of them to make sure they remain extubated. Okay, take care of them to remain extubated. So there's certain things you have to do to remain them extubated. Key fact, right? So a ventilator, I'm not going to draw it, but there's a machine that I guess I got to draw it. It's a machine 
He has a lot of staff on enormous, and the patient will be here on his bed, okay? And he will be intubated, connected to the machine, and there's a monitor, and we will have signs, normas telling us what is going on. We just prayed in for the patient initially, right? The ventilator cannot do anything without certain variables. He has variables that you can manipulate, right? Can manipulate, depending on the patient respiratory reserve, what they lacking, what they mixing, right? So we set the machine to FiO2. This is just a fraction of oxygen, inspired oxygen. that we want the patient to get. Like we sit in and sometimes in a non room at 21%, you know, but this one, we give them a certain fraction of oxygen. Sometimes it range from any highest normal is 100%. So you can go to 100%, 90%, 30%, but we always try to come down to room uh, and FIO to like 21%. But you can go to like 100% of oxygen inspired. You can go all the way down. Then that's the FIO2. Then you got to give them rate how many times? Like you're sitting down breathing like 16, 14, 12, depending on how relaxed you are, 18. If you stress 20, breathing fast. So rate, we give them rate, right? Normal of breath. Normal of breath per minute. Okay, so that's what it is. So if I say I give the patient rate 14, the machine will breathe 14 times in every minute. So that's what it is. Then there's TV. This is the tidal volume. Basically, the amount of gas delivered. Okay, the machine would deliver amount of gas. Sometimes you can give them 400, depending on their long volume, 500, 600. So we give it to you based on your lung volume. And that is very, very important, okay? And so that's what usually um, the machine would deliver based on what we said, okay? Then there is something we call PEEP. And this PEEP is the, what is the definition, is pressure added, so, that's pressure added at the end of expiration. So that's all, or exhalation, exhalation. So the actual definition is positive. We give them positive and so positive and expiratory pressure. So you can just define it. Pressure added at the end of expiration, isolation. So when you take a deep breath, you take in. Then when you take it breath out, your alveoli is supposed to collapse because there's no more air in it. But we give you this pressure to keep the alveola open, to keep alveola open. So that is PEEP. PEEP is designed to keep your alveola the alveolar is uh, on open. So that's positive and aspiratory pressure. Very, very important. And then there's this machine. We give you pressure support. Pressure support, think about it like you, you're breathing through a straw. It's very hard breathing through a, a straw. Even when you're using a straw to suck um, fluid, when you're drinking something, Coke or anything like that, you need certain pressure. When you intubate it, because you got to breathe through the straw, it's a long straw. Look at this long straw. We give you certain pressure to support you as you take the breath. And so it's mostly taking in breath. This is inspiratory issue. So we support you while you take the breath. So this is a, uh, is a form of pressure for inspiration, okay? Pressure for inspiration okay and that supports you while you uh inspiration support while you breathing okay when you, you're trying to take a breath 
and we give it to you. Okay, so that's what we give it to you. It's different from peep. Peep is at the end of expiration, we top you up. Pressure support, we give it to you to take the as you initiate breath too. So every ventilator should have an FIO2. So I can give you example. A patient intubated, you will be on FIO2 of a certain numbers. You see like 40%. Okay, this will be the FIO2. You see a rate of maybe 12. Okay, you see a tidal volume of 500. Okay, you see a peep of maybe 5 and a pressure support of 5. So this is something you can see as event setting. And you can manipulate this based on the patient ABG, classic brief information. And so if you, the, the, the oxygenation is affected, you can, you can change certain numbers. How do you do that? Keywords, okay? So let's go back. So to improve the individual oxygenation, Okay. Oxygenation, that means you're just giving them oxygen to improve their saturation to go up. The two things you can do is FiO2 and PEEP. These are the things that improve oxygenation. So if you want to improve patient saturation, you can increase the FiO2 from 40% to maybe 50%, 60%. You can increase the PEEP to from from five to six or seven, that's the thing. So when you're going up on PEEP, you're in increasing oxygenation. If you're going up, up on FiO2, you are increasing oxygenation. But if you want to improve, okay, ventilation, ventilation is the exchange of CO2. You have to increase the exchange of CO2 and, and so, the way you can improve oxygenate, uh, ventilation is to improve their volume. So the tidal volume, okay, and rate. That means you increase how much they take breath so they can blow the CO2 faster or blow the CO2 lower. And you can think about it. When you're going under respiratory acidosis, your rate is lower. Your respiratory rate is lower. That's why you undergo that. You go respiratory alkalosis, you breathe fast. So to that is ventilation. It, it affects your exchange of oxygen and CO2. Therefore, the best way to improve ventilation is to change the tidal of volume and the rate of the individual. Now that we know, what can you say So now you got to know the mode of the ventilators. So let's, the mode of the ventilators so that you can figure out how you can manipulate. So you got to know these things. There's different modes. Okay, there's AC and the word is A, assist. It's assist control. Look at the word, I'm assisting. So basically this is like, it's deceiving, even though it's a assist, it's actually full control, full control. So basically the machine is breathing for you, for the patient completely, full cycle. So all the, throughout the cycle, the machine will breathe for you. You can't do anything. If you try to take a breath, the machine will breathe for you. Every time you make, an effort to take a breath, machine will breathe for you. So there is no spontaneous breath here. Basically, it's a full control. Even though it's a assist control, it's actually, you are not breathing on your own. So if they said the patient is on assist control and is not breathing, yes, because that is the definition of an assist control. It's not supposed to take a breath on the assist control mode, once again. When you are in assist control mode, you should not take any breath. You may be able to, you try to take it, but the machine will say, it will detect it. It said, no, you you're trying to breathe, I will breathe for you. So every time you make an effort to breathe, the machine will breathe for you. So there is no uh, spontaneous, basically, 
There's no spontaneous breath in this machine. Very, very important key that you're supposed to understand. Then it's friend SMV. This is a very long, and look at it. It's synchronized, okay? Synchronized, intermittent, okay? Mandatory. Ventilation. It's a bunch of words, right? So what does that mean? All it means is it's opposite to access control. It's just supporting you. It's breathing for you. The machine will breathe for you. So breathing for the patient, but allows spontaneous breath. So it's not a full control, okay? It's, it, 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 it's going to give you whatever is set. If there's a volume set, 400, there's a rate, it's going to give you those 400 volume and the rate, okay? But as soon as you make, like, this is the volume, tidal volume that was set. This is the rate, maybe 15 for the machine. As soon as you try to take a breath, the machine will stop. And it will let you take your own breath. So your breath probably will be like two, 350 and your rate probably will be like 13 and it will be recorded in the machine. If you don't, the next breath, you don't make any effort, the machine give it to you, it kick in. So it's watching you. If you're not breathing every time, it will kick in and breathe it for you. Unlike the assist control, assist control, if it's set for 400 and the rate of uh, probably 14, if you try to breathe, no, it's not going to allow you. It will give you 440 instead of you taking your whole breath and the rate you want to take it. So that's the difference between assist control and the SMV and control. So that is very important that you understand the difference between this uh, different uh, vent ventilation. Sometimes they will bring this machine that we all know, okay, CPAP. And like all endless questions, is definition, okay? Look at it, it's continuous. Pressure, positive. So it's continuous uh, pressure, okay? Um, So it's continuous, positive, I'll put it here, positive airway pressure. So what is he doing? He's giving you a positive pressure and it's continuous, no matter what you like it. So this is usually used for like somebody with obstructive, obstructive sleep apnea, but it's also a weenie mode. It does not support you, okay? It's just giving you a positive pressure. So positive pressure throughout the, vent and the respiratory cycle. So during inspiration, expiration, it's giving you one positive pressure that is set. So you keep on giving to you throughout. And like I said, it's a weaning mode. It's not support. So, and it also can be used in you know, obstructive sleep apnea to prevent your lung from collapsing. So this is what it is, it's a CPAP machine. The other one that people like better than CPAP is BiPAP. It's okay, BiPAP is the same as a CPAP, except the pressure changes. It doesn't give you the same positive pressure, okay? It give you bi-level, that's what they call it, bi-level pressure. So the pressure changes, so, Maybe it, it detects the pressure in your system in it. And so it varies the pressure. It gives you different pressure during inspiration. It gives you um, pressure during expiration, depending on whether you're taking the breath or not. So the pressure, even though it, it gives you throughout the cycle, the pressure changes within the cycle. That's different from BiPAP. This is also, it's a winning mode it does not give you a full support 
and you can use it in a sleep apnea patient. Okay, and I told you about the pressure support. The pressure support basically is an inspiratory support as you breathe um, through the uh, ventilator. You take your breath, it's like breathing through the straw, we give it to you um, during inspiration. And the PEEP is the end expiratory pressure. So at the end of expiratory, we give it to you. So and respiratory pressure. These are the modes. There's one is a little bit advanced. That one is um is pressure control. So this is different. Pressure control. It's not the volume. All this assist control, SMV, um, CPAP, BiPAP pressure and peep they are they are all they can be classified as a volume control mode this is a pressure mode so there's two types of mode there's a volume mode and a pressure mode so this pressure control mode uh, so it's a pressure control ventilation this we set setting pressure okay And the machine regulate the pressure. It does not let you go above a preset pressure. If I set the pressure to 10, you can go past that. And so that you, we, we don't cause too much injury to your lung. Uh, in um in the volume control, AC, assist control, SMV, CPAP, and all those things, you can have uh, the, the pressure in your system in the Long can changes that can and that can cause barrel trauma. That's what it's called barrel pressure, barrel trauma. That means pressure trauma, okay, and that can um cause problem. So the barrel trauma is due to pressure. This does not allow that it supports you. It gives you set pressure that I don't, I don't cause injury to your lung. So these are the modes you have to be comfortable with them. And then you have to know the definition because that's the way they will trick you. So know the definitions and then um, yeah, how to apply each of them. Okay, so that's the first um, clue. Then the second group that we got to think about is the PEEP, positive and respiratory pressure. Think about it. I'm putting your lung, this is your chest like that and you have your your heart sitting here and you have your two long here and you have your trachea going to each of them as you apply pressure to keep the lung open the lung get bigger bigger and bigger and then your heart gets squeezed in the middle and so this heart will be squeezed okay it will be squeezed. It become like that. If it become like that, it's not going to function anymore. So the effect of PEEP is is increases intra thoracic pressure, and it as it increases the pressure in the thorax, that's your chest, is going to cause what your heart not to pump. So the heart function affected and that is what your cardiac output goes down and when it ha that happens your blood pressure will become hypotensive if you become hypotensive you can get into heart failure because there's a there's too much pressure things will back up and you, you can have a jvd that can go up and all those things, you have to connect all of them. The other thing too is the lung that is being open for a long time can develop a barrel trauma. That means pressure trauma to the lung and the lung will perforate. When the lung perforate, what is the name we give it? Pneumothorax. That means air comes out from the lung. And so this is the complication of PEEP. These two complications, you have to know it. 
okay, hypotension and barotrauma are the number two complications, all leading to intrathoracic pressure from that. Okay, so this is something you have to know. The ventilators will start making noise, okay? They will make noise. But before that, let me give you some clue. Know that when you take breath, we are using negative pressure. If they asking you a question, they can trick you. When we take breath, the reason why we're able to take air inside, we use the pressure outside is higher than the pressure inside us. So we use negative pressure to breathe in air. So that's why our lung doesn't rupture, okay? The air outside has a higher pressure than the, the pressure inside us. So we create a negative pressure and that can push the air to move them from high pressure to low pressure. But the ventilator is different. It gives you air through what? Positive pressure. It creates a positive pressure. And this is the positive pressure that can cause the barrel trauma because we slamming you with the pressure that is high and we can hit your lung, your lung can um, get into trouble. Guess what? The ventilator can make noise when the pressure in the system is too high or too low. And that is the uh, alarm that you have to know, the pressure alarm, okay? There's two types. There's low pressure alarm This is high pressure alarm. Sometimes they use volume, it's the same thing, okay? So it's a low volume alarm, but low volume create a, creates a low pressure and high volume creates a high pressure. They just relate it. This will create the low pressure, this will create a high pressure. So your test wants you to know what alarm bell, when it goes off, what do you think? If I see, Okay, a low pressure alarm. Look at a ventilator, it's a tube, think about it. This is the patient and there's a tube going there from the machine. And there's a certain pressure you got to maintain. So if the pressure that is going there is low, that means something is leaking somewhere. Or the patient does not, there's no resistance at all. It just flow through it. So. When there's no resistance, there's leak. Something has leaked in the system or the patient doesn't even have a tube anymore. So it may be due to leakage. So calf leak, leak of the calf of the uh, the ventilator or the uh, endotracheal tube or disconnection. Patient is probably has disconnected himself or extubated himself, pull the tube out or something has displaced. Okay, all of them are consistent with the low pressure alarm. There's no resistance at all. And you have to worry, worry that the patient has basically pulled the tube from their mouth or there's leaking or there's a break. So anything like that break in the system. Remember, because this is a closed system. The closed system should maintain its pressure. If the pressure decreases, that means there's a leak or if there's disconnection or somebody cut the system. And so you can use this idea to think about what condition. So when they give you a separate question, what causes low pressure alarm? It may be one of them. The opposite is high pressure alarm. How will high pressure alarm it? There's a blockage here. If there's a blockage, the machine will detect a, a, a high pressure alarm, or patient has too much secretion, or something in the lung. So anything that will cause too much pressure will give you high pressure alarm. Example is mucus plug. It's not good, right? Or secretion. It's not good. Even patient is biting the tube, yeah, it's not good. If there is a kink, yes, okay, that also will cause high because they created high pressure in the system. There's a blockage somewhere. I don't know, but there's a blockage. 
you can do that. Uh, all patients is trying to get up. He's fighting the two. Okay, he's fighting the two. When they're waking up, they realize that they've been intubated for so many days. They try to like fight. When they're fighting the tube, you create high pressure alarm in the system. If you mere cough, when they cough, these are all things that can do that. Coughing can cause high pressure alarm. Of course, things from the lung, the lung itself. What are the things that can cause pressure blockage? Pneumothorax is another one. We can do that. A pneumothorax can cause high pressure alarm because there's too much hair leakage and then it's causing the lung pressure to go up. So pneumothorax. Okay, pulmonary edema. Okay, it's another thing that can cause a uh, high pressure alarm. Bronchospasm. Remember there's blockage, it's causing blockage in the system that can do that. Acute respiratory distress syndrome can do that. Also high pressure alarm. Here fighting the tube, something came into my mind. Pain, if they are in pain, they will give you high pressure alarm. So know this, the low pressure alarm is very little, no, only few things. So I suggest you learn more, you pay attention to the low pressure alarm information and then when they give you a question they say oh, these are low pressure alarm anything else has to be high pressure alarm that's what you do or you can learn all of them that if you know what are the things causes lower pressure alarm it will be easy to be able to identify um, you just select which one causes low and the rest has to cause high pressure alarm okay so that's that portion now Guess what? We got to fix some of the high pressure alarm. And sometimes blockage like mucus plug is common. So mucus plug, how do you handle it? Or secretion. You have to know what to do to how to suction the patient. Okay, suction the patient. The certain things you have to know, okay. Don't suction the patient every hour. You suction as needed. If the patient tells you they need suctioning, you suction them. Suctioning Q1 hour is always wrong because it causes problem. Too much suctioning, so avoid excessive. Avoid excessive. In the question, when they say routine, don't pick it. This is wrong. That's a trap in the ankles. Suction the patient routinely. Yeah, this is a trap because it's too much. Frequency is too much. So you suction the patient when they need it. And when you suction, it's 10 seconds or less. Okay, that's how you suction them. Okay, no pressure when you put in the suctioning in. Apply, drawing, insertion. No pressure, drawing, in session, you should not do that. Before you do it, 100% oxygen and pre-oxygenate the patient for about 20 seconds. Okay, pre-oxygenate them as much as you can with a lot of, um, um, with the FiO2 of 100% and pre-oxygenate them 20, 30 seconds, then you can suction them. Wait one to two minutes between suction so that they can recruit and then re-suction them again, suction them again. Those are the key facts. Then no ABG after suction. So this is the way I can say it. 30 minutes before or 30 minutes after you should not know ABG. If you suction a patient 30 minutes ago, yeah, you can draw ABG. If you suction them after 30 minutes, you can draw a ABG. You gotta wait. So no, no um
yet. You can do that. So you try not to section them within that frame. So you get to wait. So you have to wait to allow the along to recruit. Very, very important. How about if the patient has like ICP, is brain injury? And you 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 monitoring them. Same same thing. No need to do Q1 hour suctioning. You suction them when they desaturate or they need it. Very otherwise the ICP goes up. So you don't do that every time you suction them when they need it. So these are, I'm giving you key facts that they test. These are exam questions that they really, really like. So if you know them, you go with them. But these are the things they usually bring in the exams for you to know. So that's what I'm giving you. Okay? So those are the facts. Now, we have our patient who is intubated. Of course, if you get intubated, you're going to get pneumonia. So, back. Ventilator. Associated pneumonia. You're going to get pneumonia. How do you prevent it? Prevention. Or avoid this problem. One, you need to reposition them side to side, like you two. If you can, if they have like ICP issue, yeah, you don't have to do that. But if they don't have any other thing, yeah, you can do this um, side to side. You got to provide oral care. Most most of the time, chloroacidine is is what we use, and it has to be with chloroacidine that will kill the bacteria that is going to cause the pneumonia. And their head should not be flat, it should be 30 to 45 degrees. Okay, you gotta wash your hand, standard uh, precaution. As much as possible. If they are intubated, they may be getting sedation, so provide sedation early day, we call it. So it's a, in the morning, maybe one, seven to eight o'clock, there's no sedation so that they can wake up. They can take breath on their home. So those are key fat you should do. Then you can also do suctioning, but there's something they call subglottic. You go secretion. If they have subglottic secretion, you can go and fish it out and that may help with the prevention of this problem. Some people say uh, GI prophylaxis. That means giving them photonics or H2 blockers to prevent gastric ulceration and that to prevent pneumonia. Um, this is not, it's a weak evidence. So this is weak. I'll put it there. It's a weak evidence. That means if you see it, um, it's 50-50, you know, ankles most likely will not take it because we don't do that because um, it's, it's something we used to do nowadays. We don't give people prophylaxis to prevent pneumonia. We can give it to them to prevent ulceration, but not to prevent pneumonia, ventilated associated pneumonia. These are the most important ones to prevent ventilatory associated pneumonia. How do you know somebody have pneumonia? Bab, you have to look at your chest history. It has to be infiltrate. So some infiltrate. Then two, they have to have fever. Usually fever greater than like 100.3 um, is fine. Then third one, okay, you have to have sputum culture. Okay, sputum culture to show that there is a bacteria. So you have to meet all these three criteria. 
They have to be sputum. They have to be having sputum that is productive. Um, they have to have fever. They have to have something on the chest x-ray to show that, yes, they have pneumonia. And after you get those three things and you diagnose them with pneumonia, your first thing you do is give them antibiotic. The antibiotic is a broad spectrum antibiotic to take care of the bacteria. So that's very, very important. Okay. And then I think finally, there may be change in patient condition. Change in patient condition that you have to know. And things may happen, right? The sites may drop, other things. So what would you do? Number one is to prevent aspiration in patients. Do not give them give them um bolus feeds. Bolus feeds basically blowing uh, fluid in their belly. It get distended. Your esophagus get bigger uh, and relaxes, and they get reflux and they aspirate. So aspiration, no bolus feed. Somebody intubated. This is key. You have to like write it down. Intubated, mid, continuous. Feed. Everybody who is intubated, you need continuous slow feeds. Okay. Two, changing condition. If the patient starts is dropping or decreasing and is intubated, what would you do? Patient starts is dropping and is intubated. First person you need to see is see the patient. So assessment is normal one. Whenever you patient site is dropping or anything like that, assess the patient. So most of the time, listen to the lung. And that will give you a clue. If they need a suction, you suction them, okay? Suction, you suction them. Then if they need oxygen, you give them oxygen. If nothing is working. And what is that oxygen? It has to be not nasal cannula. Okay? This is wrong. We can give you nasal cannula 15, 15 liters. No, it's not enough. We want what? What we call resuscitative uh, bag. So that's the ample bag. Uh, yeah, they will use the word bag max. It's the best way you can you can pick. That's the um, ventilator you can use. That will provide minute ventilation. Um, so they need a bag max or ample bag. Okay, and this can be called resuscitate Active bag um, that should be connected to high flow oxygen. That means 15 meters. Somebody is getting into trouble with respiratory issue. Yeah. Most of the time you assess the patient, listen to them, or just put oxygen on them. And the oxygen has to be a bag, bag them. You got to bag them. You cannot put any nasal cannula. So if they ask you what essential equipment you need, this is an essential. Anybody who is intubated need this ambu bag or resuscitative bag on their bedside connected to a 15 liters. It's an essential, uh, uh, Equipment you need to have. If you need to have one thing and a patient intubated, is this. You have to have it on the bedside so that in case they get into trouble, um, you can take care of it. Okay? So that's that portion. 
What about if I get estubated? I did well. I get estubated. What will you do to me? Make me MPO. Don't let me eat. Until I have good gag reflex. Yeah. Then you can feed me. Gag reflex on, until feed. Before feed. Okay. Then you got to give them oxygen. Right? What kind of oxygen? It has to be humidified. Not just humidified. Um, oxygen. Okay, and this has to be given to a face mask. That's why you make them impure because you cannot eat with the face mask. Okay, they have to be in a high fowler position. You're doing this in order to prevent them from being intubated again. And what is your priority, number one? It's strider. When it's strider like that, that means they have airway collapse. They will have athleticism. Yeah, for lives of the uh, long bases, so long sound, long sound at bases will be decreased. But this is not important. The most important is strider. Your bra pressure may be sometimes high and your heart rate sometimes low because they're just waking up. Uh, but just know then later it goes up. So just know those are all no important. You got to go for the airway. So if they have a strider, yeah, I need to intervene as soon as possible. This is a sign that something's going wrong. What is the problem? Sometimes they're not intubated. They have a tracheostomy. What is trachea? Of course. LPN can do trick here. So but what is the most important? Fresh trick. What do you do? The number one is you have to make sure it's secured. How do you know it's secure? One finger bread. Put one finger bread under it. If we can, we can take just one finger bread, that means it's secure. If you more than that, yeah, it's not secure. One finger bread and the tie is tight, okay? It's, it's secured. These two, you got to check it and make sure you meet that qualification. So if they give you a question, somebody have a fresh trach, what should be your number one assessment? I'm making sure this is like really tight. Because if the patient neck, okay, and the tray comes out, we are in trouble. So one bit, put your finger there. If you can take just one, that means it's cure. If you take four, yeah, it's not good. And the tie is tied, okay? They will give you a scenario because of this. They'll give you a scenario. Fresh, okay? Oh, yeah, the trick, and it's 12 hours or 24 hours came out, what would you do? So you have a trick, came out 24 hours after placement. Don't put it back. The track is not matured, so we don't we don't have a mature track. So what you do is cover the track with the uh, uh, occlusive dressing. Okay, cover with occlusive dressing and bag marks the patient with ambu which has 15 liters per minute. And then you call the provider. They notify provider. Never reinsert it back and never call RRT. Oh, no, no, respiratory therapist right away. Cover the thing, the trach site, and back the patient where somebody is calling. 
is when it happened in less than seven days. So immature trach is less than seven days. So if all this happened, 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, still it's less than seven, hours, seven days. So anything less than seven days, you cannot insert it back because then you have a false track and it will cause trouble. So those are the keys. If it's more than seven days, so greater than seven days, yeah, insert it back. If it come back, insert it back using the, there's a trans, trans, uh, introducer. That goes into the trick and you can put it back in. And that should be fine without any problem. Remember when they are um more than seven days, and especially if it's longer, sometimes the same size does not go. So you want to have small size lower than um the the one the original at best side. or the original size. So you have to have both. Have the smaller one, okay, lower than what you have, and then have another one that is um, of the same size. So that if the same size does not go in, you put the one that is lower. So that's when it's seven days here, yeah, you can set it back. Of course, if you cannot, if you can't, if we can't insect because even if it's more than seven days, yeah, cover it with occlusive dressing, the same thing. Cover it with occlusive dressing. And if patient have a respiratory issue, yeah, back marks them. And then you notify the provider. These are the keys, short form of ventilators, management, acute issue, um, and what you need to know. Then let's go back to those questions. Now, these are the questions. Test taking skills from the back. Which mode is paired with the correct description that should be included in the teaching? The next is teaching new graduates about ventilators. Support, okay? Test taking, it's just pressure support. I'm not doing anything, I'm just supporting you. Even if you don't know, look at it, if it does sound like support. The only thing that will trap you is the inspiratory. But I see support pressure with each breath. This is correct. And it happened during inspiratory. That's so. So this is correct. Continuous positive airway pressure. Look at it. Positive, right? Continuous positive pressure throughout the respiratory cycle. Definition of CPAP. So this is right. Assist control. What does it do? I told you the assist is a misnomer. It's full control, full ventilatory support. It does not let you take spontaneous breath. So this is also correct. Synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. Mandatory. I need you to take a breath and it's synchronized to your breath. So it allow spontaneous breath in between ventilatory support. So this is it. So all of them are right. So those are the, you can watch the lecture. So selected apply, right? And next is caring for a client with ARDS on mechanical ventilator. Our order for positive and respiratory pressure for 18 was ordered. Pressure is given at the end of aspiratory to keep the alveolar open. The nurse will anticipate which of the following complications. I draw it and show you your lung guy here and your heart. And we put in too much pressure here, this heart will squeeze. That will affect cardiac output, so hypertension. There will be too much pressure in the thoracic system. And the heart is squeezed, blood will pull up. You get a JVD, you can get barrel trauma from the peep, pneumothorax, which is the same as barotrauma. I intentionally put pneumothorax and barotrauma, which is the same. 
And if the cardiac output decrease, you have low urine output. Everything is right over there. So, next question, selected a brand. The nurse will anticipate which of the following. The nurse is caring for a client receiving mechanical ventilation. High, high pressure alarm. Buzzword, all right, high pressure alarm. Okay, that means I have blockage. So I'm looking for answer that shows blockage. Micros block, I'm picking you. Self extubation. There's no resistance. I'm not picking you. Kink blockage. Calf leak. No, less resistant. Hemotorax resistant. And the trachea tube disconnection less resistant. So I have five, three, and one. Once again, new generation. Pick those you confident that you know it's right so that you can get a full credit. Okay? So one, three, and five are right answer. Which of the following assessment require immediate intervention? A nurse is caring for a client receiving mechanical ventilation. The client was extubated two hours ago. Which one? Extubation, I don't want to extub intubate you anymore. So I'm looking for bad airway collapse. Athleticis is no airway collapse. Saturation, when you start taking breath, you get better because you just estubated. Liquid breath sound along long basis is the same as this, athleticis. That's definition. Okay, so both of them cannot be right. Audible strider is airway loss. That means obstruction of the airway. So number four is the right answer. Number five. Which of the following action performed by LPN need immediate intervention during ET2 inline suction? Apply suction for 15 seconds is too long. At less than 10 seconds. Okay, drawing withdrawal. So this is one. So we need immediate intervention. Yeah, so this one, we're going to intervene. Pre or snare the patient before suctioning. Yeah, we don't need to do anything. Suction client every hour, you don't need to suction them. You suction them as needed. Apply suction during insection. Insection, there should be no application of suction. Draw ABG immediately after suction. Wait 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes. So which of them need immediate intervention? 15 seconds withdraw suctioning. Applies in suction every hour and then suction during section and getting AVG. And then finally, which of the following is labeled wrong? But which of the following, this is six, which of the following action and next? should include in the plan of care to prevent ventilator-associated pneumonia. So which one will prevent ventilator-associated pneumonia? We have talk about it. And hygiene is good. Oral care with proacidine. Head out of bed. Sedation early days so that you can take a breath. Setting to allow, setting to allow spontaneous breathing. What it means is you're giving them ventilator setting that will let them take breath. This is the same thing we're doing like sedation holiday so that you can take breath. Proton is IV. Like I said, PPI is not completely, it's very controversial. So I'll put one, two, three, four, five. This is the end of it. Show you how critical care portion of your test can be very important. I hope you gained something and subscribe if you have not and turn on your notification so that when I make video, you get it. Thank you for sticking around and good luck. Keep charging as always. All the best of luck. Bye-bye.